Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss foreign currency exchange rate. We will discuss why it exists, the reason, type of ex currency exchanges. We'll talk about the bid ask spread, the spot rate versus the forward rate. And here we'll talk a little bit about the forward contract. Then we will discuss briefly foreign currency options. What are they? Starting with why it exists. Why do we have foreign currency exchange market? Simply put, because we have international trade. Businesses in the U.S. sell their product in Europe, sell their product in China, sell their product in the Middle East. And as a result, partners usually wants to be paid or pay using a local currency. So if you sold your product to a European, they want to pay in euros because that's their local currency. And if they sell you something, they want to be paid in euros because that's their local currency. So partners will, will want to be paid in their local currency. So one party will always have to buy or sell the foreign currency. So if you receive it, you want to sell it because you want to convert it. And if you want to pay in a foreign currency, you have to buy it. As a result of the international trade, there's a need for a market where you can buy and sell foreign currency. Now, from 1945, which is after World War II, till 1973, the exchange rate was fixed. So you would know exactly how much each uh, French franc or Deutsche, German uh, Deutsche Mark will be converted into USD. Those are gone now. They are replaced with the euros. So you will know exactly the fixed rate. And also even the US dollar, because everything was fixed in terms of US dollar, you could also find the exchange rate of the US dollars in terms of gold. So all the currencies were fixed. Post-1973, most currencies float in value. And what does float mean? We're going to see in a moment. It means it changes based on market supply and demand. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So we have two main types of currency exchanges. We have independent float, or simply put float, where market forces, market forces means what? Means economic conditions, supply and demand, determine the exchange rate, determine what the exchange between two countries is. For example, for example, to buy a euro, you need one point US dollar. Well, this rate could change tomorrow to 1.05 or it could also go up to 1.07. So what does it depend on? Depending on market conditions, supply and demand. The government usually has little or no intervention. The government don't intervene. Sometimes they do, but often they don't. Countries that have this independent float rate, US, Canada, UK, Japan, Australia, Brazil, Switzerland, the Eurozone. And we also have another type of exchange rate, which is called fixed or pegged to another country, pegged to another currency, not country, to another currency. Usually they peg it to the US dollar. So if the US dollar goes up in value, their currency goes up. If it goes down, it goes their currency go down. And some countries to name few, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Hong Kong, and Panama. Those are the currency are pegged. You might be asking why? So why a country like Saudi Arabia would peg their currency to the US dollar? Simply put, they have most of the revenue in USD. Why? Because most of the revenue is generated from oil and oil is priced in USD. So it's easy for them to plan, to create governmental budget, to, to create a budget for the whole country, expenditure, roads, network, so on and so forth in USD, since their revenue is US dollar. Although they have their own currency, but the value of their currency is fixed in terms of the US dollar. The other countries, basically, each country has their own reasons. We're not that's is beyond the scope, but uh, of the course. But the point is to know there are certain currencies that are packed or fixed to the U.S. dollar. Let's talk about the bid ask spread. So when you look up a currency, you could look up the currency in more than one way. For example, here, I said if I want to buy a euro, how much would it cost me in U.S. dollar? Well, it's going to cost me in U.S. dollar one dollar and 
six pennies to buy a euro. So if I'm a US citizen, I would say, okay, how much it's gonna cost me to buy a euro? I would say $1.06. Another way to see this is indirectly is to say, okay, how much will I need uh, in euros to buy a US dollar? Well, I need 94 euros to buy a US dollar. And how do I go from here to here is one divided by the straight. So if I take one divided by 1.06 will give me 94 pennies. Now this is most likely rounding, but you would need 94 euros to buy a dollar or you can exchange Another way to say it, if you want to travel to Europe, you have to, you pay 1.06 to buy one euro. Now, when you are dealing with foreign currency, foreign currencies, you have to be aware of something called the bid and the ask price. What is the bid and what's the ask? The bid price is the price at which the market maker, let's call it the bank, the, the, the party that's transacting with you, that's exchanging the money, is willing to buy the currency. Remember, be bid, be buy, okay? Now, the ask price, they have two prices. They have an ask price and a bid price. The ask price is the price at which the market maker is willing to sell the same currency. The difference between the bid and the ask price is known as the spread. It could be very small, it could be very large, but that usually represent, not usually, it's represent the profit for the market maker, for whoever is doing the exchange. So let's assume a dealer is quoting, to buy a euro, the bid is 1.06, and 1.08 for the ask. So to buy one euro, 1806 is the bid, 1.08 is the ask. Let's assume someone from Europe traveling to the US and needs to sell 10,000 euros. They want to take 10,000 euros, they want to sell it, they want to exchange it into US dollar to go and spend the money in New York and travel in the US and see the country. Okay, so what's gonna happen is this. Since they want to buy USD, they're gonna, we're gonna quote them the bid price. The bid price is the price at which the market maker is willing to buy a currency. So I will buy your euro, I will buy your euro at 1.06. So the bid 1.06, and the dealer will pay them, the dealer will pay them 10,600. And the dealer now have $10,000 in their treasury. 10,000, I'm sorry, 10,000 euros. They gave them $10,600, they have 10,000 euros. Let's assume you're next in line at that dealer and you are traveling to Europe and you want to buy 10,000 euros. And the deal, dealer would say, sure, I will sell you the 10,000 euros. The, the ask price is 1.08. And you say, okay, how much is that? They will take 10,000 times 1.08 and they would say, pay me 10,800. So obviously you see that the dealer, the difference is $200. The difference in is a profit for the dealer. Now, usually the spread in the US Euro, it's not that high. It's really, it's like third or fourth decimal, but I'm just trying to make the point here so you can see the profit to the dealer, the spread. Now, the spread also could change depending on the liquidity of the currency and changes in currency values as well as conditions in the market. But usually it's not that high unless you are dealing with a third world country where it's not very liquid. Just I'm just making the point. So don't take those spread as real. They make that much for that. So this is what we mean by bid and ask spread. Let's talk about the spot rate versus the forward rate. What is the spot rate? The spot rate is the rate you can exchange the currency for now. There's a bid and there's ask price. I just showed you. For example, if you're traveling at the airport and you want to buy and sell a currency, the rate that you can exchange that currency with right at that moment is called the spot rate. Now we have the spot rate and we have the forward rate. And the forward rate, there's a bid and there's an ask. What is a forward rate? Well, forward is the future. That's a negotiated, simply agreed between a firm with its bank to exchange foreign currency for example, for US, for US dollar on a specified future date at a predetermined exchange rate. So you would say, look, I'm going to need 300,000 euros or 300,000, whatever currency I need, I need it in three months from now. So you can negotiate with the bank and they would say, okay, we will sell you this currency at 1.05 or 1.08. This is the forward rate. They negotiated the forward rate with you. They simply agreed on it. There is no upfront cost. Usually there is no upfront cost for uh, for that type of arrangement. The difference between the forward rate and the spot rate, it's, co it's called forward points. It could be higher than the spot rate or lower than the spot rate. When the forward rate is higher than the spot rate, it means higher, it means more expensive. We say there is a positive forward point and we say there's a premium in the forward market on this currency. It means we expect the currency to go up. When the forward rate is less than the spot rate, we have a negative forward points and we say the currency is selling at a discount. 
Now, why is there a difference in the forward and the spot rate? Usually, it's the result of the difference in interest rate between the two countries. So the interest rate in the two countries differ. Usually, when the interest rate in the foreign country is greater than the domestic rate, the foreign currency usually will trade the forward rate is at a discount. And the opposite is true. When the, fo when the foreign interest rate is less than the domestic currency, the foreign currency sells at a premium. It means they have a lower inflation, generally speaking, if it's lower, generally speaking, but that's usually the explanation for it. So let's talk a little bit about the forward rate. The forward rate, just like the spot rate, subject to changes. So for example, if on June 15th, the US dollar per Mexican peso spot rate is 11 pennies. So you need 11 pennies to buy, 11 pennies to buy one pesos. And the forward rate contract to be settled on August 15th, okay, August 15th, is 0 0.105. Notice it is it is less. It's a point, point 0.1050, which is 0 0.110. It's less. It's discounted, and the discount amount is 0 0.005, and the two-month forward due to higher interest rate in Mexico rather than the U.S. So that could be the explanation. Let's assume that a month later, the spot rate decreases to 0 0.08. Now you only need 8 pennies to buy the Mexican pesos, well, guess what? Most likely the forward rate would be, would, would be, would be still less than 0 0.08, assuming, you know, there's no major changes in interest rate. So this is how the forward rate, this is how the forward rate uh, works. And we'll talk about this later on when we looked at the forward contract. Basically, you want to lock in your price. That's why you engage in forward contract because you have to pay your suppliers in Mexico, you want to lock in that rate. You will agree between uh, the firm and the bank to make sure you're going to have those Mexican pesos at a certain price. Foreign currency options, they are more flexible than forward contract. The foreign currency options, they give you the right, not the obligation. Remember, the forward contract is a contract. You are kind of obligated to buy or sell those currencies. The foreign currency options, as the word suggests, options, they have they are right and not obligation. And we have two types of options. You can buy a call option, which is the right to buy or purchase a foreign currency at a strike price. Strike price is what? Strike price, or sometimes it's called the exercise price. It's the price that you can buy that foreign currency on. So this is like, for example, uh, you know, 1.56, 1.56, or whatever that price is. There's a strike price. Put option is the opposite of a call option, the right to sell. Put means put it away and someone will take care of it. They have to buy it from you. Right to sell a foreign currency at a strike price for a period of time. Just basically, the difference is this. If you have a payment in a foreign currency, if you have a payment in a foreign currency, what you need to do, if you have a payment, what you do is you buy a call option. This way you can buy the currency and make the payment and know exactly what you are paying. The put option is used is when you have a receivable and a foreign currency. When you have a receivable, you buy the put option to make sure you can sell those receivable at a certain price. In concept, it's similar to the forward rate. The same concept for the forward rate. The forward rate, you enter into a contract if you have a payment to lock in the rate and if you have a receivable to lock in the rate in which you can sell it. You buy the option unlike a forward contract. The forward contract is basically an agreement. There is nothing you have to pay. For the option, you have to pay a price. There is a premium to pay. So if you want to lock in, you have the right to buy the currency and there's and the option currency is organized. There's a there's the Philadelphia exchange where you can buy and sell those options and you have to pay a premium for that. Now the value of any option has two components. It has an intrinsic value and a time value. So the option is what? Option gives you the option, gives you the option to buy something at a locked price. How does the option work? Think about, I want to go to Europe tomorrow or in a, in a month from now. And right now I can exchange, I have to pay $1 and six pennies uh, to buy one euro, okay? And I think by the time I, by the time I'm traveling, I might have to pay twenty. okay? A month from now. I think that's what's going to happen. So what would I do? I buy, I, I might pay, for example, $300. I pay a premium and I lock in my price at 110 Here comes two, three months later when I want to travel. Well, if the price is indeed 120 well, great. 
I locked in my price at 110. Let's assume the price actually I was wrong. Now it's like I need one dollar and three pennies to buy a euro, then forget it. I lost the three hundred dollars. Now I'm gonna go to the market because I have the option. I, I don't have to use the option, it's an option. I can keep it, I can pull it whenever I want to, but eventually it expires. We'll talk about this. But this is what the options are for. It gives you the option, the peace of mind that you have an option to exercise and buy the currency at a certain price. So the option has two parts, an intrinsic value and a time value. What is the intrinsic value? The intrinsic value equal, equal to the gain that could be realized by exercising the option immediately. Usually, not usually, not usually. Most of the time when you immediately buy the option, it has no intrinsic value, okay? For example, if the spot rate of the euro is $1.21, a call option to purchase the euros at 118 has an intrinsic value. True. You might you might be saying, okay, why don't I buy the option at 118 and sell it at 121 and make immediately three pennies in profit? Usually when that's the case, you might have to pay a premium, a three pennies. Sometimes the premium is more, but at least the premium that they will charge you is three pennies. So when you pay the premium three twenties, uh, uh, sorry, three pennies, if, if they make you pay a premium of 320, well, now it's costing you 121 and the euro, you can sell it at 121. You make no profit, no loss. Now you make a profit if the price is started to go higher than 121. On the other hand, when the spot rate for the euro is 115, it means you can buy it or sell it right now at 115. A put option, which is to sell the euros with the strike price of 112 has an intrinsic value of zero. Hold on a second. Why? Because you can sell it right now at 115 you have the right to sell it at 112 why would i sell that 112 so this option this put option is worthless when would this option be worth something when the euro fall falls to 1.11 1 1.10 1 1.05 below 112 if i have a put option my fear is my currency it's gonna it's gonna drop you want it to drop when it drops at 1.05 and you can sell it at 1.12 then you are in the money in the money so remember the put has a different purpose than the call and don't worry about this just basic have a basic understanding but the point is you need to know that there's an intrinsic value the intrinsic value is if you exercise it how much do you get that's the intrinsic value an option with an intrinsic an option with a positive intrinsic value is said to be in the money that's the term okay for example this this option here is in the money assuming you know there's no premium because you can buy it at 118 sell it at 121 assuming there's no premium of three pennies we said it's in the money okay now out of the money let's assume you had to pay a premium of five pennies and you can sell it at one you can buy it at 118 well 118 118 plus five pennies it means it cost me 123 it cost me 123 i can sell it at 121 we say the option right now is out of the money why because if i exercise it, it cost me more and let's assume back to three pennies premium if i have if i paid three pennies in premium and the exercise price is 118 and the spot rate is 121 my premium plus my cost is 121 so it cost me 121 i can sell it for 121 i have no intrinsic value because if i exercise it my profit is zero so the option could be in the money and the money means it has a positive intrinsic value out of the money when if you exercise it you lose and if you exercise it have no gain and no loss it has zero intrinsic value so that's one part of the value of the option called the intrinsic value the other part of the option is called the time value the value of time within the option well the spot rate remember can change over time and cause the option intrinsic value to increase or decrease so as time goes by remember the stock price could go up from here uh, for example this 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 121 could go up to 125 if the spot rate is 125 immediately this will have more value because your intrinsic value went up because the spot rate changes over time there's a time value a call option to purchase the euro with a strike price of 1.12 has a zero intrinsic value when the spot is 1.12 because if you go ahead and exercise well it's the same thing as the spot rate it has a positive time value because there's a chance that the spot rate could increase over the next 90 days let's assume we're going to say right now the intrinsic value is zero, but I still have 90 days for that option. Well, 90 days, what I'm hoping is if I have the call option, I'm hoping that this goes up to 120 or 113, anything above 112. 
the value, the possibility of that happening called time value. Because I have time, I have value in the option. However, as time passes, as time goes by, so if I go from 90 to 89 days, to 80 days, to 70 days, as time goes by, I have less and less time for the, for the currency to change, the value of the time decreases as well. So, as time passes, the time value of an option decreases because there's less time remaining for the option to increase in intrinsic value. I have less time for that to happen. Now, one in one day, you know, the, the currency could shoot up or shoot down. That's a different story. But as time goes by, you have less time. Think about you are trying to sell a gallon of milk, and that gallon of milk has a 30-day expiration, okay? What's going to happen? As you get closer to the 30 days that gallon of milk, it's going to have less and less value because at some point you cannot sell it because it's going to expire. Same thing with the time value. Actually, the time value at the expiration date, it's equal to zero because that's it. The time passed. There's no way you, you, you don't have time anymore. So the, the value of the option has two values. Intrinsic value, intrinsic value, it's numerical. And time value is I have time and I'm hoping tomorrow the euro will go up. I'm hoping in a week from now the euro will go up because I still have a month. I'm hoping two weeks from now. But as I, but as I approach the end of the period, my, my time value goes down. My time value goes down. Think about playing a soccer game. If, 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 if a team is losing one to zero in a soccer game, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're watching the World Cup now, as the time ticks down to that 90 minutes, you have less and less time to recover. Okay, for example, at minute 60, they still have 30 minutes to go. So they still have value. They still have time, 30 minutes to equalize the game. But if you're playing at minute 90, you're just going to have maybe three or four minutes in, in, in overtime, and that's set. So the time value of the game is gone. Okay, this is what we mean by value of option. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at MCQs, true-false exercises. That's going to help you understand this concept better. This is an advanced accounting course. Um, again, the topics, we're going to be using everything that we learned here to apply it in different settings. So make sure you are familiar with, with the basics. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.